Alright, today we're going to make a concave out of 3 ace by 5 ace little pony roadster, or a cock and wedge as they say. It's, it's 5 ace by 3 ace is a little scant, so the test to me would be to try and preserve as much material as possible. The heel cock, we're not going to jump up. We're going to jump up for the wedge, bumping into it so we have enough material for a flat spot on the back side. If we don't jump up for the wedge, it gets a little pinchy and then you've got nowhere for the foot to set. On the heel cock, what we're going to do is we're, not, we're going to almost do like a bad hockey stick and we're going to leave it laying down a little bit and try and gather it up by picking up on it the whole time and we can put material right in front of the heel cock and have material for the heel cock. It's, uh, the biggest problem with these shoes is once people learn how to make a wedge, they make a wedge way bigger than the heel cock and it doesn't look proportionate. So we're going to try and tone it down a bit on the wedge and pick it up a bit on the heel cock. What we're going to do is we're going to jump up a very short piece for the wedge and we're going to try and bring it together and get some height. I'm going to narrow it up. I'm only hitting on this side because we've already got plenty of slope on the medial side, so there's no sense in hitting on that. I'm just going to See, now I got a little bit of material on the on the inside as the outside. And you can see I've filled up that center part to where I'm dealing all with mass. It's an illusion with concave because it's hollow, so you think you have a lot of material. And it took me, you know, just a little while to fill up that void in the center to get to make my wedge. Just a little bit of material. Now what we'll do is when we bring it out, we're going to set it down and start a collar to begin the, the shaping of the wedge. Pick up on it, start your collar, and then start picking material back into it to get your height. Spinning it the whole time to try and soften the corners. This is, I want to hit here to get my backside flat. When I do that, I keep a nice flat surface so I can always take material anytime I want. But once it starts to get narrow, it's hard to add material. Nice flat surface along the back edge. Put me a little bit of welding flux to bring all that junk together. And we'll just weld it one time. All right, bring it out, start welding it. I've got plenty of material to forge down. I'm picking up and I'm just kind of getting my a lot of the rasping work out of the way. Now if you can see, I've got it kind of blobby so I'm just going to kind of clean up my section right to the heel and just kind of overlapping blows and kind of bring that all together. I've got plenty of heat, I'm going to rasp up the edges. We've got the wedge tightens up. It's going to tighten up from the medial heel on in and it's leaning slightly inward towards the inside aspect of the bar stop to, to just be safe, keep them from brushing and stuff. Now we'll go to the lateral side.
All right, we're gonna take and just narrow up the stock a little bit on the inside edge. Try and close that up. Come over the soft part of the horn. Make a kind of a crisp. And it's way down, so I'm gonna try and just bump. I'm bumping into it. Then you come up here. You can see material start to go into it. Keep it straight, and now I can start really putting material in there. You could probably get to where you can do this in one heat, but you want to be patient dropping it down because you want to get as much material in there as possible. You'd like a little material to roll forward to where you have material to play with in there. One more heat and we'll bring it all the way down. Ready? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to pick up on it. When I say pick up, pick my hammer and try and pick that up. And then now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it flat against the anvil and push out a little bit to get the front of my heel cock going that direction. Get down on the inside edge. And again. Clean up that outside edge. When I clean up this outside edge, I'm, I'm picking back a little bit to where now I can find the true corner. If I get that front edge of the heel cock leaning back just a little bit, I can come right here, get the true corner of my heel cock and set it down a little bit. You can see that tightens everything up. And now, we'll just clean that up with a rasp a little bit. Alright, we've got the heel cock done, cleaned up, the wedge done, so now we have a piece of bar stock. A shoe for a table, you don't want to offset as much because you don't have a foot to complement it. So, it really looks like it's hanging on the outside and way too tight on the inside if you were going to nail this shoe on. But a, a shoe that, I mean, a, a shoe that you don't have a foot to complement it with, meaning that it's going to lay on a table, you're going to want to you want kind of cheat more towards a symmetrical shoe than an asymmetrical shoe because your eye, the eye of the judge and everything, it gravitates more towards symmetry all the time, whether they know it or not. So to offset this shoe, we're going to go with five and three, I mean ten and three quarters, which halfway mark would be five and three eighths, and then the beginning of our safing will be an inch and an eighth off of that on both sides. All right, so what we're going to do is just to save it for complication reasons, we're just going to safe it in the cold, and then that way I can be more precise. So now, when I pull that, that will all pull tight and my toe bend will already be sorted out. I'll put my toenails behind that corner right there and my toe should, should pretty much be sorted out. And then all these hammer marks will be blended in by pulling that around the horn. Yeah. Making my toe bend, start over on one side, come on over to the other. Try not to hit it at all, just trying to manipulate it. Start here on the end and kind of just bring it all in and bring it a little tighter. Start out here.
you can see without ever hitting it, it stretches that and it, it cleans up that toe without marring up the inside edge of your stock. Stamping right behind because I got my measurement. Now I've pretty much got my toe sorted away. We'll do either the medial or the lateral. Lateral first and then the medial. Alright, we're on the heel quarter. I'm going to keep it above parallel to the ground and I'm going to push into it. Pushing down with my tong hand and then sweeping it around. Go up a little bit more. It's still a little bit wider so I'm going to lock in my toe and pull up towards me a little bit. Just to lock it in a little bit more. And that is a sweet shape. Heel nail, and my toe nail, even spacing, it's fit for an MX-50, it's a little tiny 110 wide shoe or 4 and 3 eighths, everything about this shoe is just trying not to wreck it. Do the medial side. Hold it above parallel to the ground, put it where the heel quarter is, and don't let it suck you over the horn and just kind of come and, and go around the edge. And then tighten it up in the toe a little bit, and then right from your heel quarter just kind of sweeten it up, coming back to the, to the wedge. Again, I'm just going to take and push it down a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. This is where everybody will be at, is I love my shoe, I love my shoe. And then the next part is, did you get it clipped? So what it is, is they, they save the misery for the very end. I've got me a hybrid Gavin Golby hammer. It's missing an edge, so I miss the inside edge. Pick it up and just try and hit the same spot twice. Over and over and over. Got a nice clean source hole. This would be my rasping heat. I've got a clip on there, kind of blend my clip in a little bit. Check and see what kind of width I got. I'm a little wide. And then rasp it. I would rasp, make sure I clean up all my edges. All right. Clip in the lateral side, pick it up, get you enough corner, and try not to hit that inside edge. When I say the inside edge, the inside edge of the concave. Probably overall effect of it doesn't have much effect, but it's just unsightly. 
I got a nicer, sharper edge on this other clip and hammer, so I, I like a nice, tight, sharp corner to knead that material out, stay at the base. Ah. I was a little bit wide. Blend in my clip. And I'll clean it up for the final. Nice and flat. I'll rasp it up and we should be pretty close to size. Alright. We're supposed to be 110 wide. 110 wide. Uh, you know the clips. Try not to rip your whole web out of your out of your section. Pulls down a little bit. You know, and it is, I think it is long for a foot on the inside. But like I said, when you've got it on a table, it you don't have that complement, the foot to complement it. So you have to go with more symmetrical than asymmetrical. Uh, the toe safed off somewhat like the picture and uh, it's a good start it's a good basic approach towards that shoe and uh, we'll get we're I think we're pretty close to being right the only thing I love more than cats is one that will travel 40 yards <laughs> no animals were harmed in the making of this video <laughs>